I received an email message from Rob Turner who indicated he was getting unexpected results when using Datacad's 3D rotate command. Well, to rotate things and get expected results, it's important to understand Datacad's coordinate system. Now what you're most familiar with is Datacad's XY plane. When you start a new drawing and begin drafting, you're looking at an ortho or plan view. I'll also refer to this as the ground plane. This XY plane has a Z axis, which is perpendicular to the screen. So positive Z actually comes out of the screen toward you. Now the rotation that you're most familiar with is rotating entities counterclockwise or clockwise about the Z axis. By default, zero degrees is to the right of the screen and then counterclockwise from there, 90 degrees is toward the top of the screen. So this is the direction of positive rotation. Well, a good reference for this is page 511 of the reference manual, where you'll find a description of the right-hand rule. Well, Datacad's coordinate system and its rules for positive and negative rotations observe the right-hand rule. Simply put, the right-hand rule says, with your right hand, point your thumb in the positive direction so that would be along the positive z-axis or the positive y-axis. And the direction that your fingers curl indicates positive rotation. So what you're most familiar with is rotating things in plan. So that's where you would point your thumb toward you along the positive z-axis. And then you would notice that your fingers curl in a counterclockwise direction, which is positive rotation. So you can refer to this simple rule whenever you're working in 3D and rotating objects about the X, Y, or Z axes. So let's go over to Datacad and explore this a little further. I've created this sample file to illustrate Datacad's coordinate system. On the left hand side we're looking at a plan view of my model that I created. And on the right hand side we're looking at an isometric view that I've loaded into a multi-view window. Now I've set up the multi-view window to automatically update, so every time I change the geometry in the main drawing, we'll see that view updated on the right-hand side. Before we continue, I need to talk a little bit about what you can and cannot rotate about the X, Y, and Z axes in Datacad. In general, entities that you create in 3D like slabs and polygons and cylinders can be rotated using Datacad's 3D rotate command. On the 2D side, lines and text and dimensions cannot be rotated off of the ground plane using Datacad's 3D rotate command. Now there are a few exceptions. In particular, under the curves menu, you have covered polylines. And these are very handy for modeling uh, extruded profiles. These entities can be affected by the 3D rotate command and rotated off of the ground plane. A couple other examples of note are symbols and XREFs, which includes self XREFs. These entities also can be rotated using Datacad's 3D rotate command. Now for this example, I've taken some text, uh, yeah, specifically true type text, and typed the word rotate and I've used Datacad's 3D Explode command to convert that to a covered polyline, which I've then subsequently saved as a symbol. So for the purpose of this exercise, I'll be rotating a symbol at the center of my model using Datacad's 3D Rotate commands. So let's begin with the Rotate command that you're already familiar with. I'm going to press R for Rotate, and that brings me to the Rotate menu. And then Datacad prompts me to enter the center of rotation. So I'm going to bring my cursor to the center of the model, and then Object Snap. Now whatever I select is going to rotate about that point. I've set the angle of rotation to 5 degrees, so that's 5 degrees counterclockwise about the z-axis. So I'll select the symbol a few times, and we see that it's rotating in 5 degree increments counterclockwise about the z-axis. Now I'll use the rotate command, or I'm sorry, the undo command to bring that back into its original orientation. 
rotation. And then we're going to move over to the 3D menus to explore the 3D rotate options. So I'll right click out of this menu. And then from the 2D edit menu, I'll select 3D menus. And then from the 3D edit menu, I'll select rotate. Now I see a few new options immediately that I didn't see in the 2D rotate command. I have options for X, Y, and Z axes. And this is where you would indicate to Datacad which axes you want to rotate about. Because essentially you rotate about one axis at a time. And then there's options for X, Y, and Z angle where you can indicate how much you want to rotate the entity about that corresponding axis. Now like the 2D rotate command, I'm being prompted to enter the center point of rotation. So I'm going to bring my cursor to the center of the model and then object snap. But in 3D rotate there's another element that I should keep in mind and that is the center Z. Because I can rotate off of the ground plane I need to also indicate where along the Z axis does the center point lie. So when I pick that I can confirm that it's at zero. I'll press enter to accept that. So I'm rotating about 0, 0, x and y, but I'm also rotating about 0, z. So the center point of rotation is at 0, 0, 0 for x, y, and z. Now I'm rotating about the z axis, and the z angle is set to 5 degrees. So when I select this entity, it does the same thing that it did in 2D. It rotates in 5 degree increments about the z-axis. Well, let's bring up the properties of this uh, symbol entity. I'm going to uh, back out of this menu and then double click on this symbol entity. And DataCAD brings up the symbol properties. And toward the bottom of the properties, I can see that there's x, y, and z rotations. Well, the technical term for this information is the transformation matrix. Just above that we have X, Y, and Z enlargement, which we're not talking about today. But this, in combination with the rotation, defines the transformation matrix for a given entity. So if it's been rotated and squashed and so forth, these values will change. Now, in particular, we see that the Z rotation is now 90 degrees, and that's because we've rotated that entity about the Z axis 90 degrees. Well, I can quickly put it back by changing that to zero, and then selecting Apply. And now that brings its X, Y, and Z rotation back to the original 0, 0, 0, and click OK. But let's talk about rotating this about the y-axis and the x-axis. So I'm going to go back to the rotate command in 3D. And instead of rotating about the z-axis, I'm going to rotate about the x-axis. Now because I left the menu and came back, I'm being prompted to enter the center point of rotation. So I'm going to object snap in the center there again. And now I'm ready to select an entity to rotate. Now instead of clicking the mouse multiple times, I'm going to use the Enter key. Because the Enter key acts like a selection, and I can just hold that down, and we can watch this rotate dynamically. So it's rotating along the positive direction of the x-axis, 5 degrees each time. Now let's do that about the y-axis. So I'll pick y-axis. And then I'll do the same thing. I'm just going to hold the Enter key down. And then we'll see this dynamically rotate in the positive direction about the y-axis. And I could do the same thing for the z-axis. So that's positive rotation about the z-axis. Now these rotations are always relative to the screen. So once you establish your view, in this case we're in a plan view, but if we were in an elevation view or even an isometric view, these coordinates would be the same. So your rotation about these axes is always relative to the screen. Now I'd like to get this back into its original orientation 
and it would, I'd be hard pressed uh, to reverse rotate on each one of these axes to get it back to where it was. So I'm going to back out of this menu and then bring up the properties for this and I can see the various rotations which have been applied. And one at a time I'm going to set those back to zero so that each rotation is zero and that brings me back to where I started. So that's a quick way using the properties of the entity that you can get its orientation back to zero, zero, zero. Let's click OK. Now, there's a couple of tips uh, that I can add to this before I uh, finish up. And that is, when you define your angle of rotation and your axes to rotate about, after that, you can actually change your view and perform the operation. So let me demonstrate that. I'm going to go to the 3D Rotate menu and I'm going to select my center point of rotation and I'm remembering that the center Z is also at zero. And now that I've established these parameters, I'm going to select 3D Views and then I'm going to select Isometric. And this brings up an isometric view and I'll right click once after establishing the isometric view and that brings me back to the rotate menu. And now in this view I can rotate about the z-axis. So let's see what happens. So I'm rotating in the positive direction around the z-axis and I'm doing that in a 3D view. So it's not occurring relative to the screen at this moment because I've changed my view but I've done that after I've established my rotation parameters and I could do the same thing for any one of these axes while I'm in this view now. So that is one way to establish your uh, angle of rotation and then perform the operation while you're in the 3D view. I'm going to right click and uh, exit back out to the drawing. And we can see that our isometric view is uh, maintained. And just like before, I'm going to double click on the entity and I'm going to set the rotation for X, Y, and Z back to one, one at a time until it's back in its original orientation. So let's go back into the plan view, which is where we started. So I hope that gives you a little bit of insight into rotating objects in 3D. So as always, thanks for listening, and please leave any comments and questions you have in the space provided below this video.